We watched the video and uh, with Candice looking lovely in that amazing dress. Um, and she was talking about data. And that's a term we use in this training just to describe um, everything collectively that we can experience. So thoughts, emotions, sensations, people, places and things we just call data. And what we've done for our entire lives, again, as was explained by Candice, is we've tried to find happiness by rearranging our data. And what that means is we try to make more happy thoughts, emotions and sensations and hold on to them. And we have negative thoughts, emotions and sensations, negative data that we want to get rid of or modify. So that's the conventional game of life. More positive, less negative. Hold on to the positive, get rid of the negative. Um, there's one big problem with that approach. Is it, it doesn't work. <laughs> so um, if we only have that approach and we keep going, we, don't, we, have, we have no option. We don't, we don't say, oh, this approach doesn't work. What do we do? We blame ourselves. I, I'm, I'm the problem. If only I try harder, then I can get a girlfriend. If only I stop eating pizza, then I'll be thin, then I can get a girlfriend. If I get, get up at 6.30 in the morning, go for a run, don't eat pizza, then I can get a girlfriend. <laughs> this, this is an example of the data that would just go round and round in my head all day before I came to this training. And um, So to, to try and cultivate happiness... Is, is, is a natural instinct. So to, we, we, we believe that we'll be happy if we have more positive things and less negative things. And what happens is everyone in this room sometimes at some point in their life may well have been successful in having more positive data than negative. But we, we find that what, it doesn't provide us what we're looking for. We never feel like we've arrived. And so when we're introduced to the balanced view training, we're introduced to an alternative approach where we can just let the data be, so it doesn't matter what comes up, whether it's positive or negative. And we do that by relying on, on the practice of the balanced view training, which is to recognize open intelligence whenever we remember, and we just do that for a short moment. So the instruction is, Short moments of open intelligence, repeated many times, become continuous. And in order to be able to do that, you need to be introduced to what we call open intelligence, not as, not as an intellectual idea, but as an actual experience, so that you know you have it, you know what it is, what it feels like, and then once you've had the introduction, you can recognize it whenever you remember. It's just brilliant. So anyway, I'm going to introduce you to open intelligence. Hello. <laughs> I'm, I'm Open Intelligence. Nice to meet you. Um, okay, the way we introduce ourselves to Open Intelligence is we just stop thinking. So do that. You can do that right now. Stop thinking. Stop describing. And what do you notice in your experience when you do that? Of course, immediately a thought will come back, a sensation will come back. But just, So just do it again. Stop thinking. Stop describing. Some of you might be describing... I can't stop thinking. What's he talking about? How do I stop thinking? So if that's happening for you, just don't worry. <laughs> that, that, was what ha that was my experience too. It was just I found it really annoying to stop the instruction to stop thinking. It's just like I can't stop thinking. What are they talking about? But thankfully, um, there are many other options available to um, enhance the recognition of open intelligence. So... Now, when I stop thinking and I stop describing, and most people, when they do that, they, they recognize an openness, a clarity, a spaciousness. Um, it's quite hard to describe, even to pin down, but it's easy to experience. So that is open intelligence. And it doesn't matter what you call it. It doesn't matter what you call it. Clarity, openness, love, it doesn't matter. The important thing is you have it, and you have the experience of it. So now you know, whenever you remember, you can relax and just, just acknowledge open intelligence. That's the practice, the only practice. And all of the other supports of the Balanced View training, like I said, are just to enhance that recognition. So we have uh, trainings, online, books, media, um, obviously face-to-face -face trainings. 
there's a community, a worldwide community, there are trainers. Um, it's a whole package um, of many, many aspects, even though it's the four mainstays, there are many ways that you can use that support. And if you do that, um, you'll, you'll just start to see more relaxation, more openness, more harmony. Life just gets easier and easier. Um, like a, pr a perfect example is, is sitting here right now. It's the first day of the autumn gathering. There's many people, well, some people here I haven't met. And conventionally, you know, we don't prepare what we're going to say, even though we say the same thing every time. <laughs> um, we don't know what the questions are. So conventionally, it would be, you know, I'd be pat for days before going, oh, it's, 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 the first, it's the first open meeting. I've got to make sure it's the best one because if I don't do that, then people won't like the training and I'll be a failure. And then, you know, just, and then reading books about any, all possible topics that people <laughs> might ask questions about, you know, just complete panic and total tension and, and, and get here and just be compl a complete wreck, hoping that I don't get a question on, you know, some philosopher or some something that I wasn't able to, to read about. Um, and, and so to have my only preparation really is to use the four mainstays because I, I'd be lying if I said I'd spring out of bed and go, oh great, I'm doing the open meeting. How lovely. I love open meetings. <laughs> it's not that at all. It's like I, re I really don't want to do this open meeting. I'm really nervous. I just, I just don't like speaking in public. I feel terrible. I don't want to do it. And so, now one option is to is to is to get into the game of positive and negative, and the other option is to rely on open intelligence. And when you rely on open intelligence, it doesn't matter how you feel. So I'm nervous. I don't want to be here, and it has no no capacity to affect how I am. It has no power. None. And so, like we heard Candice say, we've trained ourselves in reification, which means we give data, thoughts, a power, which they, they, they do not have. And the only reason you think they have power is because you've been trained, and you've trained yourself to believe that they do have power. So, with the, like, for example, the question about accepting data or letting it be, what's the difference? It's really... Uh, an irrelevant question. I can I can prove that to you now. I like using vegetables as, as an example. So I'm going to all gift you an, an imaginary tomato. Now now it's in your head, okay? I, I want you, with your imaginary, lovely, perfect tomato, I want you to accept it. Accept the tomato. <laughs> or, or let it be as it is. One or the other. The choice is yours. <laughs> It's like, uh, <laughs> what, what's he talking about? But for some, for some reason, we think that, you know, like, for example, our, our mothers or, or um, you know, say, say depression or something. I, I, I need to accept it. I need to let it be as it is. Now, for some reason, depression is real, but that tomato isn't. And then another example would be, I, okay, now it's not one tomato, it's 40 tomatoes. <laughs> so now your head is full of tomatoes. <laughs> and what we're going to do is we're going to just slowly take one out at, one out at a time, uh, okay, and just keep going, and eventually there are no tomatoes there. Don't, don't you feel really relaxed? <laughs> now, that, that would be an example of some of the practices I tried to do <laughs> to get rid of my, my, my tension and all of these things and really all I'm doing is moving imagine something <laughs> trying to work on things that ha do not exist they do not exist they're, they are they are appearances that are inseparable from perfect space and, and that is that is who we are that is our whole life is that everything is that so accepting or letting things as be as they are it matters not just keep relying on open intelligence and you'll start to see this. And it's the same with all of the stories we train ourselves to believe about. I need to get to know myself to be... Uh, I can't remember what you said. Letting... Oh, God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> Let, letting myself be. 
<laughs> and, and like trying to change myself to please other people. It, and and if, you, if, you, if you actually just look at the, the, the motivation behind that, it's so beautiful. We want to be happy, we want other people to be happy. And, you know, the, if we only have the tools of reification, then it's just confusion and it, it doesn't work. You know, you can't change your behavior to make other people happy. It, it might work some of the time. You can't change your own behavior to make yourself happy. It might work some of the time. It might not work some of the time. But once you start to recognize that happiness is already inherent, true happiness, so again with the example of me sitting here on stage, I'm really nervous. Um, the data of not wanting to be here is gone. So that was there before, now it's not there. So you'll start to see through this practice that data have less and less power. They disappear like the li a line drawn in water. They come and they go. Uh, any of you still have your tomato in your head? <laughs> gone. <laughs> And so this is what, what you'll start to see. Um, first, first you'll see it with your, your emotions, thoughts and feelings, but they don't have a power. You can let them be as they are. Once you start to recognize this in your own experience, you'll see this in other people too.